All right, everybody, thanks for showing up for the, uh, the briefing on the uh, Thunder Accelerator at Stanford University. And if you're watching online, I appreciate you checking us out. This is a uh, good knowledge in this slideshow right here. This, this program directly pertains to uh, veterans higher education offered by Stanford University, and it's a good opportunity. So we're going to take some time today and uh, go into some of the details of that, and I'll address any concerns that you have. So go ahead, next slide. All right, so what is the program? Um, it, actually, the, the technical name for it, the official name, is the Stanford 2 to 4 Veteran Accelerator because the way, the way it began was it was a program for uh, two year college students, so community college students, to kind of bridge the gap between uh, the two year community college and the four year university. So that's where the 2 to 4 name came for. Now, they're catering to university students today, however, it's still, um, it's still designed primarily for community college to kind of boost us up to that level. And what it is is an eight-week program that partners with veterans to build on the uh, experience that we have as veterans and develop academic skills to be the thrive of a four-year institution. So, you know, building on the skills that we required during our time in uniform, and now we're, you know, kind of breaking back into the civilian world, into academia, maybe it's been a little bit. I know for me, it's been a long time since I attended school between, uh, you know, when I started coming to SMC and uh, when I graduated high school and, you know, had my first attempt at college. So um, that's what it's designed to, to help out with. Okay, so when it is, is June 26th and August 19th of uh, 2017 with the move-in date of June 24th. It is a resident program, of course. And it's in Palo Alto, which is just southeast of uh, San Francisco in the Bay Area. It took about uh, five and a half hours for me to drive up there just you know, for a little bit more of awareness on that. Next slide, please. Okay, who's eligible? Now, I wanna jump all the way to the bottom and then I'll work through it. If you look at the bottom, there's flexibility, okay? So I don't want you thinking, you know, if, if I hit a bullet out here that you're like, oh, I don't, know, I don't know about that, I don't know if I'm gonna meet that criteria and you wanna walk out of here, just hold on. Because the only true hard line, at least from what I can uh, discern from talking to the, uh, the program director over there, is you must be a veteran, all right? As far as everything else, um, uh, high school graduation, secondary school, uh, discharge status, and uh, as far as the, the credit criteria, um, where it mentions uh, six, no more than 60 units, you know, one year of college, all that, you know, it's a little bit fluid, okay? So don't worry about that. Those are issues that can be addressed on an individual basis. And uh, on that note, if there are questions that you have pertaining to your individual case that you're not sure about here, uh, if you want to ask me, that's fine. I'll give you, as, you know, as much accurate as, information as I can, but I can reach directly out to the program director there and, uh, and, and address her directly. She's really good at getting back to me on that stuff. So I'm happy to do that for you. Um, so again, there is flexibility. All right, next slide. What's in it for you? All right, that's always the big question, right? Why am I gonna go up there? You know, why am I gonna spend time away from uh, LA that I love so much, or you know, my family or whatever it is? I mean, I unfortunately had to, to leave my wife behind for two months, but she understood the value of it, okay? Once we uh, really got into the, uh, uh, the meat and potatoes of the program and uh, how beneficial it was gonna be. So, if you're transferring, if you're already, you know, if you already have your sights on a school, whatever the case may be, you're going to get an official Stanford transfer. It's not like you're going up there. It's not some kind of, uh, you know, summer camp program. Hey, veterans, come on up here. You know, we're, we're going to have fun. We're going to pretend you're college students for eight weeks. No, you're going up there. You are a Stanford student. That's it. When you leave there, you get an official Stanford transcript, right? Just like any other Stanford student, all right? So. What, how is that good? It's going to make you more competitive, right? It's going to make you more competitive for transfer, and it's just good to increase your knowledge base. You're spending time at a very prestigious university. Um, you know, they have some of the best and brightest there on their staff to help you out and teach the classes. Uh, fast resources available. I think they had uh, it's either 21 or 22 libraries on the campus, just for example. Uh, just massive, beautiful libraries. Um, you know, they have uh, tutoring services available, a lot of, a lot of peer things, but uh, also, the, the faculty, they're, they're more than happy to take time out of their schedule and address your concerns. Um, the, the online presence there, uh, the databases, they're some of the most uh, complex and vast that, that I've ever used, for sure. And uh, you know, I'm not going to go into the, uh, the boring details about you know, the, how big it is and how much you know, data it holds and so on and so forth, but um, you have everything at your fingertips, or it's just a phone call away or an email away. Now, um, networking, social activities, that's a big part of the program, all right? It's not simply just going up there and take classes. It's, it's designed around veterans for this program. Yes, you're up there as a summer school student, you're up there for the summer semester, you're taking classes with Stanford students. 
Um, but you're also doing functions that are designed, that are tailored specifically to veterans and helping you advance through higher education. And I'm going to get into uh, a couple of the events that, that we did uh, during the summer of 2016 in just a minute. Uh, just a couple other uh, fine points that you know, just travel. If you've never been to the area, hey, it's nice to go see something different, right? And also, um, what I want to hit on is the GI Bill and DAH, okay? Now, the GI Bill, and this is a sticking point with a lot of people, and I didn't understand this at first when I went there, so I had to get clarification from uh, the former program director. If you're using the GI Bill here or your vocational rehab, it doesn't matter. You can still do this. It's an all inclusive educational package. If you want to use the GI Bill, you can. The only benefit to using the GI Bill up there is that you're still going to receive your BAH, which is significantly higher up there. Here, it's 2,500, give or take. There, it's about 3,200. Okay, so you can still you can use that BAH if you want. The downside is you're going to be using, you know, two months of your GI Bill time when the tuition is already covered by the school. Okay, so that's an individual decision you'd have to make. I opted not to use the BAH to save that GI Bill time, but if you yourself, you know, if you get accepted and you want to go use the BAH, by all means, you can do that. All right, you'll have your uh, housing. Um, financially inclusive program. Go ahead to the next slide. We're going to talk about that right now. Okay, so what's included financially? All right, student fees. I'm not going to go through all the numbers, uh, but you're going to take uh, probably seven or eight units up there. All right, so $7,000, $8,000 for that. The uh, document fee, covered. The campus health service fee, covered. So total fees from this side, as far as the individual fees, over $8,500 covered by the school. Next slide. All right, what else? Room and board. All right, housing is set up for you on campus. In fact, this this is where we live down there. All right, it's a, it's a beautiful place. It's uh, it's sort of like barracks, but a hundred times better. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's in a nice, quiet area. Um, it was a, a four room suite that I live in. So you know, you go in a suite, you have a big common area, probably about half the size of this room, and then there's four bedrooms up there. You have a desk in there, and a, you know, wall locker, things like that. So it's not too bad. So that's covered. Um, housing dues covered. The meal plan, this is uh, the, the dining area of the, the cafeteria there, all right? So uh, I know I can speak for the, uh, the fellow Marines in this room, but that's a nice upgrade from the chow halls that we've been used to, and I'm sure everybody else can agree with that. Um, so the meals are covered. And I think that, uh, I remember the, the dinners, if you went in there and paid out of pocket, the, just the dinners alone were like 18 bucks. Um, I can't remember how much the breakfast and lunch were. But you can see how that's gonna add up. So your meal plan's completely covered. Um, telecom's covered, so you get you know super fast internet. You got uh, uh, DSN, you got uh, Wi-Fi right in the rooms right there, and pretty much everywhere on campus. You can't you can't get away from it. Um, so right there, we're up to about uh, twelve thousand dollars on uh, just on what's included. Next slide. Uh, miscellaneous costs. Um, so the health insurance. If you're using the VA, like you know, I use the VA. So when I asked him, I was like, look, I don't have health insurance because I was afraid I was gonna have to come out of pocket on that. Uh, he said he used the VA. I said, yeah. He said, okay, well, then just write VA in there. And that's it. That was it. Simple. All right? So I didn't have to pay for that. Now, speaking of the VA, uh, the Palo Alto VA is just a couple miles down the road from Stanford. And it's a, a very, very nice facility. They have an exchange program where um, doctors between the, uh, the Palo Alto VA and the Stanford Medical Center, they do rotations. They switch back and forth. So I, I'm sure you can assume that the, uh, the Stanford you know, medical center uh, people that work there are pretty good, right? You know, and they switch out with the VA, so uh, nothing to worry about there. If you have to go to appointments, that was another thing too. One of the questions they asked me uh, after I got the acceptance was, do you have to go to the VA? Do you have any uh, medical concerns that we need to forward to the Palo Alto VA to get it shifted over there? Um, you know what I mean? So it's a really quick transition process. And I actually did have to go to the VA when I was up there, and uh, they got it, they got it piled up quick. I was, I was over there within two days. You know, so it was uh, it was really good. Um, there's a couple of optional fees on here. The parking permit, you know, if you're going to drive up there, which you don't really need to, but if you're going to drive up there, it's going to be sixty bucks for the year, you know, to cover the entire time you're there. So it's actually cheaper than uh, Santa Monica. I, think. Um, I drove up there. I parked my truck in the parking lot, and um, if it wasn't for the fact that there was, you know, uh, like a Seven Eleven type of place, you know, around the corner, you know, went there for a couple little things, I would have never drove. In two months, I think I put uh, about 10 miles on my, on my truck. That was it. Other than that, it just collected like this much dust on there, and it was a huge pain to wash it when I got back. Um, so you don't need to drive. A lot of people, they flew in there, they took the train in or whatever, and they got a ride to campus, and that was it. Everything's in walking distance, you know? In fact, when you're up there, they call it the Stanford bubble, where students go there, 
and they won't even leave campus for like weeks and months at a time. No exaggeration at all. You, you really don't have to. I mean, it's nice to get away from there from time to time, but you don't have to. Um, book stipend, all right, that is going to be forwarded to you uh, after your acceptance, $400. Now, on that note, I had to get six books for a class, and so I thought I was going to be screwed. It cost me $108. All right, so I actually made money on that. The application fee, 30 So if you tally it all up, I actually, I made a couple hundred bucks just by going on this program. All right, if you factor in the, the book stipend minus the application fee, you know, and you know, I spent some money on gas. That was about it. All right, other than that, everything was included. This is really the only thing you're going to come out of pocket for, for sure, is going to be that thirty-dollar application. Fee. All right, if you look at it, you know, thirty-dollar application fee. All right, yeah, you might not get in. There's that chance. Hey, it's thirty bucks you wasted. But if you do get in, you know, you're talking like thirteen, fourteen thousand uh, dollar scholarship program to go on that you make. So I'd say that's a pretty, pretty good upside of that investment right there. Right. Next slide. Okay. Now, as far as the, the program itself, so you can take up to three courses. One of the courses that you take is a professional writing and rhetoric course. That's the only, that's the one mandatory course. And um, that's, gonna be, that's gonna be directed towards the veterans specifically. So we had 17 in my group, for instance, right? And it was split in two groups. I think it was 10 and seven for some odd reason, all right? And it was just the veterans in that class. Now, aside from that one mandatory class, you can choose up to two other classes that either relate to your field or hey, maybe it's just something you want to take. There was people taking scuba diving classes up there and uh, you know gym classes and stuff like that. I, I don't know why. You know, if that's something that you're interested in, you can take whatever you want. But you have to take two or three classes, minimum two, maximum three, and one has to be the the PWR course. Right? Very good class. All right. It's, it, no matter what level of writing you're at, it's going to help you. I thought it was an amazing class. I'm really happy I took that. Um, that's, it's also a pass, no pass. So I don't know if that means anything to you. Uh, I would have preferred to have a letter grade. You can petition that if uh, if you so choose. But um, it's just it's uh, it's not for a letter grade. Um, we already covered a little bit about the academic resources. So you're going to take the classes. The, the staff are they, they bend over backwards to make sure that you're accommodated and that you have all the help that you need. I know sometimes with the I'm not knocking the professors here, but sometimes some of them don't use email at all. Some of them. You know, you email them and you know they'll get back to you. You know, a couple days, three, four days later. I think the longest I ever waited was uh, oh, probably if it was late in the evening, I waited until the morning. But if it was any time before, you know, business hours were up, I only had to wait a few hours to get a get feedback from the professors up there. They're really good. Um, and there's a full-time staff dedicated to the program, so it's not just you know you have the summer semester staff up there and this is one slice of it it is however you don't have a, a you know you don't have a bunch of people working on staff that are wearing different hats there's people that this is what i do i'm here for the the two to four veterans accelerator program i'm here for them and they're constantly available they they give a lot of feedback they're you know they're always ready to help out so uh, and i saw that as a huge benefit um, that any time there was an issue that came, that came up or there was a question about something, even a social event, you know, uh, send an email over and say, I was wondering about, uh, you know, what's going on with the you know, San Francisco Giants game or something like that, here, just take this, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, they'll get back to you, they're more than happy to do so. Next slide. Okay, just for your information, this is what some of the demographics of the past, uh, the past two cohorts look like. It actually started in 2014, but I couldn't get the stats from that first year. Uh, so this was uh, this year and last year. Uh, broken down by military branch. I don't know where the Air Force is. I thought I thought the Air Force was supposed to be the really smart one, but they're a little bit underrepresented here. I don't know why. Um, and um, one important thing to note is that most of the applicants come from California. As you can see, 21 from California. Then you have a couple sprinkled out throughout the rest of the uh, the U.S. So the word's kind of getting out there. Okay, people are learning about this program and they're applying it from far and wide. All right, so. You want to get on this opportunity now because it's getting more competitive as time goes on. And plus, you know, if you wait another year, if you think, oh, they got to give it a shot next year, they may now, you know, they may consider you um, past your requirements because of your, you know, however many credits you've accrued or you may transfer out or something like that. Um, age range, it was kind of weird being in classes because, uh, you know, the, the median age for Stanford students was probably about 19 because the vast, vast majority. Uh, well, if you're, if you're taking uh, undergraduate level classes, the vast majority of students um, arrive there as freshmen. They had very few transfer students there. But the median age for the veterans is about 28. All right, so you're not going to feel out of place, especially with that group. 
Um, I, in fact, I didn't feel out of place really anywhere that I went in terms of uh, age, even though I was the oldest one in, uh, in my cohort. Next slide. Um, real quick, I'll go through. This was a schedule of events that we used in the summertime. So uh, moved in, and the first thing we did was a welcome reception. It was like a meet and greet. Uh, we all got together, and they had a catered you know, banquet. Uh, the staff was there. There was a lot of people. There was people from past cohorts that, that came and visited other veterans, and a couple of them who actually, they went to the year before, uh, they went to either 2000, 2000, 2014, 2015, and then applied and actually got into Stanford. So there were, there were current Stanford students there, but they had gone to this program. Um, so does it help? Maybe. All right, it, it can't hurt, right? Uh, and also the, uh, the Dean of the Summer was there, and, and he's a big fan because he's actually a veteran. Actually, I think he's still in the, uh, the Army Reserves right now. Um, and the food there was, was really good. I'd go back there just for that. Um, so Vet Friday, there's a couple of these, and it's kind of like PMEs that you go to, you know, it's uh, guided discussions and things like that. So just to, to help, especially if you're really new back in college, if you ever went to college before, this is your first time in college, you're a little bit older now, you know, it just kind of helps you get on track, you know, develop study habits, things like that. Uh, resources, time management, uh, professional communication, and of course at the end here, you know, when you start talking about the college applications, because a lot of people that are going there are planning to transfer soon. Um, we went to a couple cool places too. Uh, the Brain Lab, that's where they're actually doing a, a very in-depth um, uh, research right now on uh, TBIs and things like that. So we went in there and you know, got uh, MRIs done and stuff like that. There's a, a couple of people that actually went and got paid to participate in the research where they, they just go there, you know, they get an extensive MRI taken and they do some other neurological testing and things like that. So it's, it's you actually get paid to do it, so you know, I, something like that. I would, I would think that a lot of veterans want to do for free. You know what I mean? But they're paying five hundred bucks to do that. Um, so it was a very interesting visit. Uh, handwriting analysis. Um, we visited Google. We visited uh, LinkedIn, and uh, they have a, a really cool um, virtual reality lab up there. You know, it's all the latest high tech stuff. And then uh, you know we had a couple of uh, social events as well, just to get together. You know at the Cuba Cafe, which is the coffee, just like the Starbucks on the campus there. And um, you know just had a social event. And then uh, uh, you know one of the highlights was uh, breakfast with uh, General Mattis. Um, that, that was a great event. I'll get into that a little bit more later. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so let's talk about the application process. Applications open up January 9th, so it's right around the corner. Um, there's a, the next slide is going to have an actual chart breakdown of how the, uh, the application process is going to work out. But there's about two months to, you know, open the application, get all your information together and have it submitted. Um, you're going to have to send unofficial transcripts, okay? So this, this is kind of one of the bonus uh, items here. You don't have to send official transcripts. You do have to send transcripts, though. Uh, so from, from every school you've attended, just like normal, you know, anytime you, uh, you want to switch to another school, you know, when you come to SMC, you know, when you transfer out of here, whatever you're following on school, whatever the school you're attending, they want to sell your transcripts. So um, don't leave anything out. It's, it's not going to help you. Uh, you also have to submit a copy of your D214. There's going to be, you know, personal essays, personal response questions, as you can imagine. You know, I think there's two or three of them. Uh, those are going to be, I don't ask if, if, uh, if they've been released yet, what the content are, because I don't know, but they're not going to be released until uh, the application opens up. And then a personal introduction video, which is that three minute video you just record yourself, take, you know, hey, this is me, this is who I am, this is what I'm about. Um, it was optional for us. I don't know if it's still optional or if they're making it mandatory. I think they may be making it mandatory. Um, but, hey, whatever. You know, it's three minutes. You know, you can sit in front of a you know, computer on Skype for a couple hours talking to somebody. You can do a quick three minute video. And then, of course, the $30 fee. Now, go to the next slide. Okay, so here's a, a breakdown of the uh, application uh, time frame. There is a late period, however, if the, if, the, uh, if the class is full by then, and they don't need any more applicants, which I don't think they will, then it's probably gonna be closed at that point, all right? Or if they're looking to, maybe they're not happy with the, uh, you know, the, the compliment that they've received, then you know, they, they might keep it open a little while longer, but it is absolutely not worth the risk. So if you plan on getting this application in, get it in by February 28th. If I get it in earlier than that, because the earlier you get it in, as you can see, if you get it in during the early period in January, you'll have a, you'll find out some time in February if you've been accepted or not for sure. All right, but then the further you push it, you know, the further away you're going to find out, and then it's going to be a little bit more difficult to plan ahead if, you, if there's something you need to do with your family, if you have to worry about like what's going to happen with my stuff or something like that while I'm gone for two months. Okay, next slide. 
Uh, this is something just added, actually. Um, if you go to the uh, summer.stanford.edu forward slash veterans, and I'm going to have this link up on the next slide, or the, the, the final slide, too, so don't worry if you're not going to copy down right now. You go on there, and you're going to come up with this screen, click on how to apply. You come to this screen right here that you see up, and then right here where it says sign up, I don't know if you can tell right now, it's kind of highlighted. If you click on that, you can enter your email address and get put on an interest list, and as soon as the, uh, the period opens on January 9th, they'll send you a reminder email. Okay, so aside from me hounding you, which I absolutely plan on doing, um, then you know they're going to get back to you too and say, "Hey, don't forget, application period is open. Let's go." <clears throat> okay, next slide. And the number one reason why you know you can do this is because it is approved by uh, Mad Dog Madness. There you go. All right, final slide. Okay, so points of contact. That's my email address up there. If you don't already have it. Um, Stanford Summer Program, this is just like a general, you know, it's like if you send a, an email to admissions, you know, somebody on the other end is going to respond to you, you know, you don't really know who. Um, so if you have a general question, you can send it to them. Um, I would suggest, if you have a specific question um, that maybe I can answer, you can ask me and I can uh, forward it to the, uh, the director of the program there. Um, or you could just email here and just say, hey, this is what I have going on. But um, I can probably get an answer back to you a little bit more quickly. She's really good at responding back to me. She, you know, she really cares about driving this program. Um, but if you email this, it might take a few days. So if, you know, if time is an issue, uh, let me know and I'll help you out. And then there's a link on the bottom right there that'll take you to the, uh, the, the two to four page. Um, and it's pretty much everything I covered here, you know, there's gonna be in, in, in various forms on there. Um, but uh, that's where you're gonna apply. That's where you know you're gonna have to set up a. And once the application opens up, they're gonna set up an initial account, and it's gonna be just for the application process. And you're gonna have to log in and out. You know they'll send you messages to you know request information and things like that. And um, yeah, and that's how the process is gonna move forward. 